The next challenge is pie jail. It says, it is a pie jail, get remote code execution, good luck, have fun. We're given a netcat port and some files to download. Um, I did solve this challenge during the CTF. I spent a bit of time on it, but I was unable to uh, get it through. Um, during the CTF, a separate pie jail challenge was released, pie jail is revenge. And so there were a couple of cheeses to the first one. And so the author released a second one. Um, turns out a lot of the cheeses still work on this one too. Um, so if you know how to do these challenges, uh, it's pretty quick points. Um, but obviously I don't know how to do them that well, so I didn't get the free points. Uh, but we're gonna, I made a list of all the solutions I could find on Discord and uh, a blog post, and I put them together and I kind of played with them for a bit until I understood them. So I'm just gonna be kind of talking about the different solutions to this challenge and how different people approached it. Uh, this was PyJail1. Uh, if you're not familiar with PyJail, it's basically the program gives you some Python interpreter shell. You're allowed to type in commands. They're either evaled or exec or something. And uh, you have to bypass some filtering and block lists and stuff like that. Uh, for this specific challenge, uh, we have a block list of these characters. So we're not allowed to have input that has any of these characters. So period. So we can't access like children on a module or children on a dictionary. Um, we can't use comic characters. We can't use brackets. Again, that's uh, array accessors, object accessors. Uh, we can't use these brackets, um, which so you can't construct objects. Uh, can't use printf. Uh, printf uh, like formatters and probably some other stuff. And this one, uh, you can't define classes, can't define functions, um, can't define key value pairs within an object, stuff like that. Cool, this is the disabled function, so we're not allowed to use any of these, or we'll, we'll see, I mean, there's a bunch of cheeses. Uh, but this disabled function, so they're gonna set all these functions to none when we get our eval prompt. So we're not allowed to use get adder, which combined with no period and uh, no brackets uh, makes getting objects very tricky or attributes of an object or a module very tricky. We're not allowed to call eval or exec, otherwise this would be trivial. Same with breakpoint. Uh, breakpoint opens up pydebugger, um, and then you can do whatever you want. Uh, we can't use lambda to find new functions, and we can't use help. I think there's a bypass where you do like help help or something like that, and maybe it opens vim or something and makes it easy, easy bypass, but uh, I've never actually seen it during a CTF. Anyways, um, so the script will just print welcome, and then it'll put us in this while true loop. Uh, so it'll ask for some input, make sure that the input doesn't contain any of those strings, and then it'll eval uh, our string and give us the results, and it will pass in all those disabled functions. So like I said, I didn't solve it. Um, I compiled a list of all the solutions I could find on Discord. Also, uh, Maple did a write-up. Uh, you can see their blog here. Uh, oops. Uh, uh, Blog.maple3142.net, uh, and then the IDEC challenges. Um, they also uh, compiled a list of the solutions they could find, and I think our list is pretty much the same. Um, so, uh, I highly recommend checking this blog out, and let's start talking about the solutions. Uh, cool. Um, so, just to show what it looks like, uh, so this is a prompt. You just netcat there. Um, you can still do a bunch of basic stuff. Uh, you just, you can't use, like, set adder. Um, oh, sorry, uh, get adder should be none, so we can't use that. And like if we were to do uh, a period, so I don't know, uh, a, is it too lower? Um, we're not allowed to use periods. And uh, the other brackets like these, these, and this. So uh, talking about failures, uh, so what I was trying, to, I tried a couple different ideas. One of the ideas I was trying for a while, um, so this is the function, uh, it's like heavily commented and modified though, uh, but you can still see this is the block list. Um, this is PyJL2, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, they added some extra stuff to the block list. Um, so you can do import OS, and really you want the system object off of OS. Like our goal again is to get shell. And, but the problem is there's no way to like access the child methods of OS. Like we're, we're not allowed to use brackets. We're not allowed to use periods. We're not allowed to use get adder. Like system is right there defined uh, in scope. We just can't access it. And so I was trying um, so part of these challenges, it's useful to look at the built-in functions into Python. Um, I thought for a while maybe we could use next and like grab an object out. Um, so it, like if we had an iterator of all the methods within uh, that module, maybe we can just kind of list them and delete a bunch of properties and grab the next one and it'll pop off the first one. But that'll only pop off the string. There's also like you can create slice objects, uh, which is kind of interesting. I was hoping like maybe you could call a function on a slice object, but couldn't figure that out. Um, so like I said, I tried a couple different things, like there's this property function and format, trying to get something to work. Uh, I also tried, you see, you can do 
like if you have a function, uh, you can expand keyword arguments of a dictionary. So like you can imagine import, oops, something like this. And so this would be a keyword arguments expansion, but because of this, you can't define new functions. And so you would have to reuse an existing function. So I was like trying to do map and stuff, but I just couldn't get it to work. Um, so didn't end up solving the challenges, uh, but the, the solutions that uh, do exist are pretty, pretty cool. So the first one that I want to talk about is probably the simplest and maybe the most elegant. Uh, it was by Maple. Actually, I think two of them are very elegant. Uh, the first one is, like I said, Maple. Um, so what they did is they did a set of attribute on the copyright object with dict. Oh, actually, before I talk about that, let's talk about something else. So if you do globals, so this is everything defined in the global namespace. You can see all these functions are nunned out. Uh, the get adder, eval, exec, breakpoint, lambda, help. Uh, but if you see the built-in object still contains a reference to the underlying objects. So eval, exec, all that stuff is still defined within this like Python namespace. It's just uh, these are gonna be returned first. Um, so if these didn't exist, it would still uh, call out to the underlying built-in eval and exec function. So if you can delete these, uh, you can call these. So, and that's what uh, Maple did. Um, so they did a set attribute. So they took this copyright object that isn't really being used by anything else. Uh, they assigned the underlying dictionary object to all the globals object to all of the, sorry. They took the copyright object and underlying that is their, the key value store, the dictionary for it. And they took all the globals and they assigned it to that dictionary. And so then they can call delete attribute on the copyright and delete this breakpoint object. And so that's this breakpoint object, this none one. And so once that's deleted and you call breakpoint, it'll default to the, the built-ins uh, breakpoint object. And so then from there, you can just, you have shell. So like if we type this in, uh, you can see we're in PyDebugger down here. Uh, let me scoot this up a little bit. Uh, we're in PyDebugger, and I mean, at this point, you can do um, whatever you want. So OS.System, where am I? And we're the CTF user on remote. And then from there, you can get flag. So this is one of the cheeses. Um, so if we look at PyGL2, I'm not sure if PyGL2 was built to break uh, this one break this cheese solution, because it's pretty easy to bypass. But um, so in PyGL2, uh, th I think three changes were made. Two changes, is it the same block list? Two changes were made. So the first one in block list, they added these three things. So you're no longer allowed to use the string block list. You're no longer allowed to use the globals object, the string globals, and you're no longer allowed to use the stringless compile. We also no longer are given a loop. Uh, and we'll talk about this one a little bit later, uh, but it used to be you could run multiple commands, and so now you only get to run one command in the eval statement. Um, I asked about the compile object. Uh, apparently, no one was able to get a solution working with this. Um, the challenge author was just worried that someone might. You can use this to like generate um, like the Python bytecode, uh, but I think you still need to call eval or exec on it. I think you might be able to do like type function and then call something, but I didn't play with it too much. Anyways, um, doo -doo -doo. so that was Maple's first solution, and then their solution to bypass the new globals object check uh, was they injected a Unicode character into globals. So this is a Unicode B. So like I said, <coughs> in PyGL2, we're no longer allowed to use the string globals, but they just did a Unicode B, which obviously will not pass the string comparison. And amazingly enough, um, do I have PyGL2 here? Yeah, PyGL's Revenge, so this is the second one. Oops. PyGL2. Even with this Unicode B, which you, maybe I'll pause, you can see there's this like weird spacing because it's this Unicode one. Um, Python recognizes this as the global's object and will print out everything, uh, which is crazy. So I didn't realize you're allowed to use Unicode character within Python, uh, but very trivial bypass, and, and then they can continue with the rest of their exploit. I also realized there's an easier way to do this one. Um, so there's the globals object, but since you're in the global namespace already, uh, you can just call locals. Um, and so if we see locals will still contain everything and it wasn't blocked by the new list. So you can just, again, assign everything on locals to the dict object and then delete breakpoint and then call breakpoint. Oops, uh, we should probably be in the jail and you still get back to pie debugger. Um, so locals, or you can use the Unicode uh, attack, but I feel like this one's probably very useful. Uh, there's probably a bunch of these pie jails where you can just bypass with a Unicode character. So that was uh, Maple Solutions, very cool, uh, nice and simple. Um, <laughs> these ones uh, are also very fun. Uh, so the next one, Josh L. So let's go to PyJL1. Pi <laughs> so you can import the main object 
and then overwrite variables in the top level function. So uh, this is pyjl1. So we're evaling in here and we're in this eval context, but what they're gonna do is import this, uh, the top level context and just set any of these variables to none. And so that, 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 that change will be saved. And so on the next execution of, you know, while this is running, um, block list will be empty, for example. I think they use block list, yeah. <laughs> so uh, they do a set adder import main, the block list variable, and they just or the block list list, and they just empty it to an empty list. So if block list is empty, uh, from this point you can do whatever you want, um, or any of these characters. You're allowed to use any of these characters. So you can do import os, you know, import system os shell or whatever. Uh, so very clever. I didn't realize you can do this, um, and I didn't realize it would save. I figured eval would like create its own context where, like, the parent object. Um, wouldn't be modifiable, but I guess you can kind of modify that parent context, uh, which is crazy. Um, and a uh, very similar solution. They, this one disabled uh, the disabled functions. Um, and uh, then you can you know call any of the disabled functions. Uh, this is another similar one, a little bit more complex by Le uh, LeBronly. Uh, same kind of, they start out with, instead of there's this any call and they replace it with all. So in the, the eval changes the parent context and they change this any function to instead be an all. And so if all of these, if basically this will only fail if there's one of all of these characters in the input and obviously there won't be like a comment character. Um, and so they can bypass it. Then they go and do a bunch of other stuff. I think at this point they can just do OS system, but maybe I'm missing something. This might be a bypass to uh, the second problem too, but they load pie shell and then do uh, idle lib. So I kind of put those solutions together. Um, so I think the first solution was Maple solution, uh, just deleting those objects and then calling breakpoint. The second one was modifying the parent script. Uh, the third one, solution type um, by Intrigus, is they actually just write a file to disk and then call the file. Um, so they're gonna import system, then they're gonna set the path object, so like where things are loaded from, to a temporary directory. So this is just shared memory object. This is basically just a, a, a temp directory. Then uh, because they're printing stuff, they're allowed to use care 10, which uh, I think this is a yeah, new line, and care 46, which is period. So they print OS, period, system, give me the flag, and then they save it to a file. Again, you can't use periods, but since you're in a string context, um, you can just print out the string character. So dev uh, shared memory, lol.py, and then they import this object because they changed the path. Um, so <laughs> nice and simple. Uh, uh, this is pretty fun. Definitely don't think this was one of the intended solutions, but pretty cool. Uh, next, uh, by Adnan Slef. Uh, they're going to... Oh yeah, this is fun. So like I said, there's no good way to access uh, values for uh, objects. So like I said, we can we can import all these dangerous functions. We just can't call like os.system or we can't get the system object from uh, the os module. Uh, but what they did uh, is import is allowed and import is actually something that takes a key and returns a value. And so they just abuse that functionality. So they take all the built-ins, they overwrite the modules object of sys. And so it's now sys is populated with this long list of modules, which is all the built-in functions. And then they can import whatever they want. And so they import get adder. Um, I think one of the tricks on this one, uh, sorry, sorry, actually, never mind. Uh, ignore that last statement. But uh, anyway, so they can just import get adder and then they can get the system object from OS and then just call shell. Um, if we remember, so in the global namespace, we have that globals object and that contains everything, including the none function, but it's the built-in functions that still have the original uh, uh, get adder and exact and eval and all that stuff. But I guess they could just call breakpoint too and then just do that. Um, but uh, everything works. So very clever, um, realizing that you can use import as a, uh, as a way to read uh, values off of a, an object. So this was the um, intended solution. Uh, apparently, Python has this Easter egg uh, function called anti-gravity. And if you import anti-gravity, mm, oh, let's just do it in uh, normal Python 3. Import anti-gravity. It'll load browser and show this XKCD. I'm not really sure how I feel about this being included in Python. Um, but it's there. Anyways, on this, so in this anti-gravity package, um, you can s 
it'll look at the browser variable defined in your environment variables and you can just overwrite that. So you're gonna import OS, overwrite the environment variable with dict browser, and this just calls uh, read flag. So obviously you could put anything you want in here. This is just shell execution. Um, so, and this should work on both versions. Um, but yeah, like I said, this was the challenge author solution. I think I mentioned, uh, yeah, compile was also included in the blacklist for the second challenge. Um, I asked about that. They said uh, not to their knowledge that there was anything. Um, some people were working on it, but they couldn't figure anything out. But anyways, uh, that's all the solutions. Like I said, there, I think that was four of them, uh, all very clever um, and very cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to uh, maybe apply some of these techniques to uh, the next PyGL challenge.